modifiers are used for storing values. They can then be used throughout your reactions and even in other mapping types. In this video, I'll explain how you can save and use modifiers. As an example, I'm going to build a script which uses a modifier to select the looper device on the selected track, regardless of where it's placed in the device chain. Each track in my Ableton session has a looper device. As you can see, the looper is located at different positions in the device chain on each track. So I need a way to dynamically find and save the position number of the looper each time I change the selected track. To do this, I'm going to add a reaction in my script which saves the looper's position number to a modifier. I'll first add the listener selected track has changed. I'm going to use the action blocks loop section to loop through each device in the selected track. To do this, I'll select devices. And in the path menu, choose selected track. If you're unsure about how to use the loop section, watch our tutorial on lists and loops. I'm going to output each device's name. I'll install this into Ableton and reload my session. Whenever I change the selected track, all device names in that track are output to the log. I'm only interested in the looper device, so I'll add a condition. And in here, I want to check if each device's name is Looper. And instead of outputting the name of the device in the log, I'll output the loop iteration number, which will be the device position. I'll install this into Ableton and reload my session. When I change the selected track, the looper's position number is output. Note that the position number starts from zero. And now, instead of outputting this number to the log, I'm going to save it to a modifier. This is done by selecting the option Set the value of a modifier from the script category. There are 20 modifiers which you can save data to. I'm going to save to modifier M1. I want to save the loop iteration number to it, so I'll select this in the value to set action parameter. Whenever the selected track is changed, the device position number will now be saved to the modifier. Next I'll show you how to use this stored value in a separate reaction. Once a value is saved to a modifier, it can be used in other reactions, mapping types and across all of the modes in your script. I'll add a new reaction which outputs the current value stored in my modifier to the log when I press button 1 on my MIDI controller. For the listener, I'll use the button 1 was pressed event.
In the Action Blocks action section, I'll display a value in the CSS log. And for the Value to Display option, I'll select the M1 modifier from Script Modifiers. I'll now install this into Ableton and refresh my session. And now, when I change the selected track and click button 1 on my MIDI controller, the position of the looper device on that track is output to the log. I'll add a second action to start the looper recording when I press the button. In the path menu, I need to use the selected track. For the device number, I'll use the M1 modifier. The device parameter number that we will be updating is number 2. And the number we are setting to the parameter value is 1. I'll install this into Ableton and reload the session. And now, when I select a track and press button 1 on my MIDI controller, the looper device on the selected track will start recording regardless of its position in the device chain. If you want to use knob style control of parameters such as spread or feedback using an encoder on your controller, you can use the get value from ranges option. See our tutorial on using this option for more details. Modifiers can be used in other mapping types. Instead of controlling the looper device parameters from a reaction, I'll use the value of the modifier in a device selector mapping type. I need to add the mapping types to my script, so I'll add a track selector and choose selected track for the type. Then add a device selector inside. In here is a Use Modifier checkbox. Clicking it brings up all of the available modifiers. I'll select M1. Then inside the device selector, I just need to add a parameter bank. I'm going to use button 2 to start the looper recording. Setting the maximum to 1% will start the looper recording. Parameter 2 will control the feedback. I'll set this to use encoder 2 on the MIDI controller. And then I'll install this into Ableton and reload the session. And now I have control over the parameters in the looper device, regardless of where it's located in the device chain. The Use Modifier option is available in the following mapping types. This is John from Remotify and this has been an overview of using modifiers. Please like the video if you found it helpful and subscribe to the channel for more videos on building custom MIDI scripts for your Ableton setup.